Hey everyone, it's Lisa and Kathy from Primitive Gatherings and today it's all about getting into cross stitch. Now I cross stitch 20, no, 35 years ago in high school. All right, so, we all did yeah. and it's, it's different now, but better. Right, and I see it out there and it's so cool and so different looking. And I think it's because we're not doing all that back stitching. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, not, not nearly as yeah, popular now with all I remember 433, all, the... all those precious moments, right. back stitching mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I don't, I mean, that was pretty tedious. Right. But now they look a lot more cleaner and crisper and quilty-ish for one. Right, and so. we have a lot of great designers now that we didn't have before, so that makes a big difference too. Right, and so one of the things that kind of pushed me over the edge was Kimberly Jolly had this really cool barn quilt. She had this wood barn and then you do this barn quilt for it. I think there's several different ones. You just like change the colors. And I thought, okay, I wanna do that because I'm from Wisconsin and barns are prevalent here and we have like a quilt barn trail. So I got on their website and I ordered the barn and I ordered the pattern. So here's this pattern and I was like, oh, this is different than what right. I'm used to. Right. So there's my receipt and I got a little kit. Here's my threads to make the blue one and my Ada cloth. But before I started, I thought, okay, Kathy, you need to help me because I want to make sure I, I do it right. Nowadays, right. there's so much more information instead of just, just doing it. And I remember like my backs weren't pretty back in the day. So I want to make sure that if I'm going to start this, I want to make sure I do it right. So I know you've been stitching for a couple of years now doing this. Tell me right. about how you got back into it as well. Well, um, I got back in probably kind of a, at the beginning of 2020. I started watching a lot of floss tube. And if you've never been around floss tube, what that is, it's just a community of stitchers and they talk about cross stitch. Okay. What, what they're making, what they've bought, what, what new products are out there. Or what they've started, right? Or what I, they've started, hear, sometimes I, what they've finished. Did, did you just tell me that they're starting a new project every day for 30 days or Some something? of them, yeah, there is a, a thing where you start a new project every day for 31 days or whatever. We should I, do that I, with quilt projects. Yeah, well, really. <laughs> Not. But <laughs> it's really a, a fun inspiration of, you know, you get to know the people who present the floss tubes and you see all the new products out there. Some of the floss tubers are just, you know, people who do it. Some are um, store owners professionals. or uh, professionals or the designers have their own. And so you can really get a lot of inspiration from that. So I'll give you some links to the to some of my favorite floss tubers, and you just have to watch different ones and you know see who sparks your interest. Everybody okay. does different like, kind of yeah, things. Yeah, because there's kind of a couple different styles out there. Right. I seem to be drawn to the real simple stuff, like our friend Katie Nolan. So we'll be talking about her. Her mother is a quilter, so she grew up in a quilting family, and I love that she's designing a lot of her designs around quilt kind of, kind of right. quilt related. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do we start? So where, where well, should we start? Let's just start at the very beginning for people who have no um, exposure at all to cross stitch. Okay. Because it's all so changed. And it, it really has. Since I've done it. So what counted cross stitch is, is you're just making X's on a gridded fabric. So the fabric looks like little boxes and you're making an X in each box. And that's really the simplicity this, of it. That's how simple it is. And the pattern is formed by how many boxes you put an X in and how many you skip and that sort of thing. Okay. So we're going to today go over this. This is a free pattern from Katie and we'll put a link on that. It's a very simple, quick stitch. Um, I did this just, you know, in a couple nights and it's a great beginner project. You can use Ada cloth and you can use DMC thread. So it's not a real expensive, um, little stitch to make and then you can finish it with a frame or a pillow or whatever. So a couple things. I think it's one really good for, uh, it must have helped me with needle control and you know when I started doing this in high school. So I think if we can get some of our younger girls cross stitching, right. that needle control is going to be amazing for whatever they want to do in the future. Right. And then um, 
What I also want to point out is, will we do a video on how to finish these? Because this is so cool. We will do some videos on how to do it as a flat fold and also how to frame it. And we'll also do a video on how to make uh, a cross stitch into a little pillow. Yeah, so I think like the finishing is what's so cool about today's cross stitching too. It's yeah. not just put it in a hoop right. or frame it. There's so many other options on what we can do with it. So that's why using your fabric or stuffing it and making pin cushions or you know, the, just the possibilities are endless on what you can do right. with the cross stitch. And it just correlates with our quilting as right. well. Right, yeah. Oh, it's another whole big rabbit hole to go down. <laughs> well. <laughs> What's another yeah, one? Yeah, really. Right? What's another one? <laughs> we need right? variety. I tried, to, I tried to avoid it. I tried not to want to do it, but... Right. Well, yeah. Resistance is futile. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. So what should so, we do? Should we talk about threads? Let's, or let's talk about what, we, what you or? need to okay. cross stitch. All right. So first you need cross stitch fabric. And that there are three types. There's Ada, or um, this one is... It's, it's called vintage cloth, but it's basically an Ada weave. And what that, when I say Ada, what that is, let's open that up. I'm gonna grab these. So it's, Ada cloth is a cloth that's woven in a way that you can see the squares. And we'll do an up close um, video of this. But you can see it's really easy to see where all the squares are. So you're just making an X over each square. That's the big advantage of Ada cloth over the others. Is this Ada cloth? That is also Ada, it's a smaller count. Cross stitch fabrics are sold by count. So this is a 10 count, which means that there are 10, you'll get 10 stitches per inch. Okay. So you'll have 10 X's in every inch of in fabric. Inch. This one's a 14. And so you'll have 14 stitches okay. per inch. And you can kind of see the difference. You know, so when the you higher look at the it. count, the smaller. Right. And the, when you think X's. about it, yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting that many more stitches in an inch. Okay. This white one that I have is also 14. All right. And actually, looking at this now, I think that's 16, because that okay. looks smaller than this one. Yes, it does. So this is 14, that's 16. All right. Um, as a beginner, you probably want something fairly um, with a low count. So you'll want a 14 or um, 10. This, this one, what would we say so 10? which would be the, the smaller the number. Right. So 10, you want to start with a smaller yeah. number, because okay. then your, your stitches will be bigger. Okay. This is also Ada. This is a linen-colored Ada. Stiff? Ada is stiff, okay. generally. Some are more I than... I don't remember it being no, that stiff. No, some more than others. This one's pretty stiff. This one's medium stiff, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> and then as you get into other types of fabric, you have even weave, which is just a fabric that is woven so that the threads are all even. The difference on these are you have to find where the box is. Once you start, your eye will see it, and, and we'll sh I'll show you that in a, in a bit too. But um, it's a little more challenging to work on than Ada. Okay, because they're not so apparent. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> so this is even weave. There are a lot of different varieties and uh, sizes of that. This one is, um, this one's probably about a 25 count. This is, um, that's, that's linen. Okay. This is a little bigger. This must be even weave too. That is linen. Oh, that is linen. The, the third type is linen. And the difference between linen and even weave is linen has the well, cross threads, slums. but it's got, the, the threads can be varying thicknesses. So you have some thin threads and some thick threads. So it's a little more challenging. And depending on who makes it, you know, some of it is, has less thin and thickness and some has more. If you're making antique, reproduction samplers though linen is a great that's what those were done on? yeah the, the back in the 1800s that's what they had to use was linen and so if you're trying to reproduce um, antique sampler uh, linen is probably going to be a choice for so you was that really cross stitch fabric back then or was it just linen fabric? it was just linen oh, fabric I never knew that, that happens to be kind of in grid squares okay yeah. so like like in the hotter climates, that kind of linen fabric, that's what they used to cross stitch? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, and some of it cool. is really very fine. You yeah. can get linen all the way up to 56 count. Okay, so like the finer it is, the more expensive it is with linen or kind of? Or well, linen is kind of expensive period. All the way around? Um, 
And no, some the of count it comes doesn't hand really. Hand dyed too, doesn't it? Yeah, you can okay. you can get hand dyed. That's another reason I kind of like the even weaves and the linens more than Ada because you can get such a variety of sizes and colors in it. And different backgrounds. And Ada okay. tends to be more, um, not as many um, designers or, are dyeing kind of boring it. Boring to some people after well, a while. Well, <laughs> not boring, but just solid color. Yeah. Nothing wrong with a solid color. No. And especially if you're using some of these bright um, DMCs and you want that you know, Hot, bright yeah. modern look, then the plain colored Ada is a great way to go. Cool. All so right. that's, so that's, that's the fabric. On the fabrics. So okay. three types of fabric and choose one. So for today, we'll choose Ada. All right. Then you need thread. And most stitchers are uh, designing with DMC. It's you know, a variety of colors, readily available. readily available. It has a lot of colors. It's a good product. It's color fast. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. These are about 60 cents a skein. So you don't have... I think they uh, were a quarter back in the oh, day. Oh, they were, yeah. <laughs> back in the day, they were a quarter. The price has gone up. Um, so we'll, we'll use DMC. That's what Katie charted this um, list a little design in, so we, we'll use DMC for today. If you really get into cross stitch, um, another type of floss is what they call fancy floss. And that are, um, there's kind of three main designers. There's classic color works, weeks dye works, and um, gentle arts. Okay. And they all have a similar um, product, but, but they dye them differently. So, you know, depending on what color you want, you can get a infinite variety of colors. Mm -hmm. um, these are more expensive, they're hand dyed, so they're about 250 a, a skein. So would you consider like the Valdani uh, flosses? In, in the same okay. category, okay. yeah. If you have a good supply of the three strand or the six strand Valdani, you could certainly use that for cross stitch. Okay. Good. And the nice thing about the fancy floss is it's hand dyed, so it's variegated. Yes. So you don't get a solid color like this this pink color. I don't know if yes, you can see that. Yes, it's much more it's, interesting than the right. flatter. Oh. And then you grab the one silk yeah. one I have. <laughs> yeah. That's silk. So that's another thread option. I don't really. So is that all one, or would you separate? No, that? you'd separate that. That okay. comes in in strands. But the good good point. Um, DMC is six strands, and you don't use all six. You would use one, two, or maybe three, depending on what what, the, what your count of fabric is. Or what the pattern called for, too. Right. Or, yeah. Most designers will tell you two two strands over over a 14 count or over two threads of uh, linen. Are those strict rules, or can you do what you want? You can do what you want. Okay. Um, whatever looks good to you. Like on your 10 count, you may have to try it out and try two strands and then try three strands and see see, like see if the coverage is good enough with two or if you want all three. Okay. But you rarely use all six, and I'll show you how to separate these. There's kind of a trick to it. Awesome. You can also use sulky 12 weight thread for um, cross stitching. And I use that, this is a, one of Katie's patterns that I just finished. And so um, that is with this silky thread. And with this, you just use one strand. So it's a great product. And I think you have um, some silky thread in the yep. store. Yep, do. um, I don't know how many colors this comes in. Quite a few, I think. Um, I only have red and black and brown. Okay. But it's a great- um, Alternative? Alternative. You do need kind of a bigger, um, thread count like a 14 to do this if, if you do it on too small a count the thread is just too thick this one strand of this is like two strands of uh, DMC and if you're interested in this pattern we will have all the links for all the patterns that we show today and where you can get them but this is one of Katie's right. first mm -hmm. designs I think this was I think so yeah. yeah she's only been designing about a year and she yeah. has some cute cute things. This one was also hers, this uh, yes. one that we did with the Hogs for Heroes um, yes, this campaign. Yes, so beautiful. I love that you put so, it on the dark. It makes yeah. it really pop. And see, I did mine on linen, and I think this is 40 count, so it's smaller than the one you you have that's on 14. Yeah. I should mention, when on linen, it's the number you divide in half to get the count. So like 40 count is really the same as 20 count Ada because you do it over two threads. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, I, you I can't don't see know it? where I would do this, but is it, what, is it like you progress to you, this? You do progress yeah. and I use a magnifier. Most, most stitchers do. Okay. Uh, maybe if you're young, you don't have to. I don't think I did back in the day, but I do now. So, you know, once you've got your little magnifier on, you can really see it a lot better too. Okay. So that, they, do they make a, a sexy magnifier? So oh you don't yeah, look like here a, you go. 
<laughs> that is the sexy magnifier that I like. So then, see how oh, you can see? It does work though. Uh-huh, yeah. And it looks great too. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. So that's the <laughs> magnifier. So that's fabric and thread. You also need needles. The needle size that you'll use will depend on the fabric that you choose. Probably for Ada, I would choose a 24 or a 26. Um, what did we do with your needles? They're up here. Okay. These are, you want tapestry needles. The difference between a tapestry needle and others is it's not pointy. It's, it's, it's kind of ball pointy? Ball pointy. It's kind of dull on the edge. Okay. Uh, you can still poke yourself with it, but not like the wool applique needles. They're not sharp like yeah, that. My fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to use, I think, a 24 okay. on our, um, our sample today. So does the pattern tell you what needle to use too? Not really. Mm -hmm. um, you just kind of have to play that by ear. And, and that's another thing, you know, different, different ideas for different people. Some people will, um, you know, want a bigger needle and some will be a smaller. But mostly what the difference in size on these is just the thickness of the needle and how big the eye, eye is. is. Okay. So if you want two strands, you can kind of see you need a, a bigger eye to get that through. Okay. And you also want one that you're your needle fits your fabric. It doesn't just fall through. If I use a real fine needle with this fabric, when I'm putting it through, it'll just fall. And, okay. and you want it to kind of kind of stick in the hole, okay. I guess. Is, but not but, you, that you but, have to force right, it in. Right, right. Okay. If it's too big, then it makes a big, you don't want it to make these holes bigger than they already are. Oh, that makes sense. So that's needles. Then um, you can use a hoop or not, or um, a lot of people like Q-snap frames. I use these Morgan uh, non-slip hoops. That's always worked for me. It's an inexpensive way to do it and it works fine. Um, for this Ada cloth, it's pretty stiff and I would just probably stitch that in hand. Yeah, when I made this sample, I just held it and, and stitched it. But if you were using like this linen, it's a lot softer and more pliable. It's, it's gonna be harder to stitch in hand. And in that case, I would hoop it. Hoop it, okay. And you just I know, I'm so used to stitching without a hoop now that I don't know yeah. if I can. And you'll be fine with this Ada, I think, okay. um, to, to not use a hoop. You'll just have to try it and see. But if you want a hoop, um, I like these. They're, they're another thing that's e easy ones. to find. Uh -huh. Yeah, and we have all the quilt shops carry Morgan right. hoops, mm -hmm. too. Yep. Yeah, and I like it because it has that little lip on the inside. Yeah, so this doesn't... No slip. It, yeah, mm -hmm. and you don't want it super tight. I, I put it about like that so I can kind of push up from the bottom and, and get my stitches in that way. Cool. All right. And then the other thing, excited. yeah, the other thing you need is a pattern, which are also called charts. Okay. For, yes. Um, uh, yeah, they were called charts. So yeah. this was kind of different for me when I got this pattern, mm -hmm. and it was all different sections. Right. There was like not one big one. Right. And we so should when you show get this, that. We, we this is what you told me to do. Yeah. We don't want to show the whole chart on camera. Yeah. 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 yeah but. Yeah. Um, when a chart is in several pages like this, it has a little shaded area here, and that's where you overlap the pages. So the, the page before this would overlap by these three rows. And so what I do for those is I make a, a color copy, and then I just tape it together and do my overlaps. Like and this. so, yeah, that's kind of what we yeah. did. We just taped it together. I did cut out the section that I'm going to stitch, though, so that's why I cut that out, because I didn't... It was it was like a quarter of each one of those sheets. Right. So that's why I had to tape it together and then cut it back out. Right. And and that's really the easiest way to do it is just make a color copy and make yourself a working copy and that also keeps your pattern nice. Then you're you're using this and mm -hmm. you know Yes. In case you want to use this again later. Perfect. So let's talk about how to read a pattern. All right. So this is Katie's. So the way patterns work, you've got your pattern is, is gridded like on graph paper and it shows divisions every 10 rows mm. or every 10 stitches. So you've got the 10, 20, 30 and you've got a mark right in the center to show you where your center point will be. And then at the bottom you've got your your legend that shows you the symbols and the color name and the the color number of the 
um, floss that you're going to use and the number of skeins you'll need. I don't remember like these numbers being on patterns. I mean, I remember a grid, I think, but right. I don't remember numbers. That's pretty common anymore. Okay. And usually they'll tell you at the top two the stitch count, 35 okay. by 35. Squares. Squares. Okay. Right. And if you counted these out, I mean, if you yes. start here and count over to here, that's 35. Correct. Yes. So to read the pattern, you just will, you'll start on in one box here, you'll count, so like you'll start with this apricot thread, which is 3341. So that'll be the first one we use. We'll, we'll do two stitches here, skip a stitch, do two more, skip a stitch, do two more, like that. So even though when you're here, you still just skip over and do that mm -hmm. with the thread, it right. doesn't matter? Okay. The main thing you want to avoid is- I don't, I'm not used to all this open space. Right, the, the patterns used to be a lot yeah. more Covered, and, and some covered. of them still, I mean, this one is pretty dense once you get into it. Um, you know, like when you got into these flags, every uh -huh. every box is full. Right. So, um, so to me, like jumping over to these two wouldn't make a difference here. But when you have these open spaces, you're not right. like nodding up. You're, you are moving I, I over. move. Okay. The main thing you want to avoid is you don't want to go like from this stitch over here all the way over to that this one. one. Okay. So you, can, you can't really see... The, that you're moving over like where those spaces no, are. No, but you to don't see. want a big stretch across like the whole heart because yeah. then you would see it, I All think. Right, I get it. So we would work kind of in, we'd probably do this row, then we'd do these stitches and go down and I'd work, oh, okay. I'd work around the heart like oh, that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so we'll do like, one. but you really can't. You just have to, okay, I get it. Right. Yeah. So that's the basics. We just have to read our read our chart and so what do you have start that sitting stitching. on? I have this on a magnetic board and okay. I wanted to talk about all the, the, I told you what you need to have. You need fabric, thread, needles, and a pair of scissors. Now tell now me what we there's want to have. fun stuff. <laughs> I like okay. a magnetic board so because is this... it's just a, um, I think we linked to it. Um, okay, it on is your... something we can buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it's just a, a, and it a is metal in the board. it is world. Yes. Okay. And they're not too expensive. They come usually with these count guides, which oh, are good okay. for, you know, lining, putting under where you want to uh, stitch so you can keep keep straight. Uh, uh, Lori Holt has an endless supply of cute stuff. I love cute all her stuff. cute stuff. Oh yeah, so this is a Lori Holt uh, needle minder. I don't really use them for needles so much, but I do use them for my scissors. So I Hanging. always have okay. my scissors right there. Yep. And you know, when we did the bags. So they shouldn't be called needle minders, they should be called uh, gadget whatever minders. Whatever minders you want. <laughs> Um, when we did the bags, we, yeah. we bought a bunch of these. I keep one of those on there because the scissors stick really well to that too. Cool. And you can put your needles on the needle minders if you want, but I, mine, I'm always worried they'll fall off and get in the carpet. So that, I don't really do that so much. All right. So you need to do that. You need to make yourself a fun, oh, we got too much stuff I heard everybody's here. making cross, a, a, a project bag project, for every project they have. That's right. And so you want a fun project bag. That's and you good can, for the quilt shop. Right, yeah, <laughs> this is my official cross stitch bag. Okay. Um, another thing I like to keep in my um, project bag is a colored pencil. And I like these twistables color pencils because you can um, twist them down and so they don't mark up things in your bag. And so you can just keep one in your bag all the time. And the reason I like those is then as I'm doing this pattern, if it's a complicated pattern, I can mark off the areas I've already done. And that's another reason to make a copy and just be using a copy. Because then when you're done, you can just throw it away and you haven't ruined your pattern. So when I'm doing this, um, I would probably mark off the rows as I did them. Okay. You can also use highlighter tape. That's another thing that um, you can see I bought this and I, I don't think I've ever used it because I, I really just use the colored pencil. But that's another way you can highlight rows if you have a, a complex pattern. This is fairly simple and it's large so you can see it really easily. So we probably won't need all of this for that. Yeah, and I don't know if we said this yet or not, but this is a free pattern that right. Katie mm -hmm. has on yeah. her website. And it's called Mini Sweetheart Chart. So. You can go to Count Your Stitches Designs and grab this free cute pattern here. Right. So, all right, what else do we all need? All right. Um, line Keepers, I talked about, that's just basically a magnet to uh, uh, you, that you can move along and, and will stick to your metal board. 
you can also buy some that are called line keepers. I think Fat Quarter Shop sells those and they kind of clip around the board. Mm -hmm. And so those are nice too. Um, I haven't bought those, but they're available. Um, you can use counting pins and these are just pins. I mean, in a pin will do, but yeah. you know, why not get something fancy? Fun. Yeah. Um, so that if you were doing a, a difficult pattern and you wanted to mark every 10, 10 uh, boxes so that you mm. know where you're going to be. You oh, know, you can, you can yeah. count and put a pin there. So you're not and, counting over and over and right. over again. Mm -hmm. okay. Although once you start doing this, you won't have any problem with counting. <laughs> So that's pretty much the fun stuff. Okay. And then, you know, there's lots more, but that's, yeah. that's the basics. Okay, so what about these? You said okay. that these are kind well, of... Well, back in the day, when we did this before, we either yeah. used these floss away bags to keep our floss in, or we used these bobbins. Mm -hmm. And all of that stuff is still available. You can still do that. But um, a lot of the floss tubers turned me on to this, this method, and this is called floss drops. And you um, wind your floss and put it on these um, just tags, basically. And that way, when you want to go get your thread, you can just pull one off. You don't have to unwind and rewind. Yes, so because I would end up with all these big messes. Of it, it, it does yeah, tangle. I didn't, I didn't know right. too much. So, um, so what is this? This is my winder tool. My husband made it for me. Um, it's just a nine inch long tool. And I'll show you how, how you do this. When you're using um, DMC floss, you want to pull it from the end with the number. Mm. So the first thing the we end want- end with the number. Uh, yeah, it won't tangle nearly as much. If you just pull it from the other end, you're gonna have a big tangle. I need a pin. So I'm gonna write my, uh, your color oh. number is on here. 892. So 892. So I'm gonna write that first. So now I'm gonna just pull from this end and I'm just gonna wind this around here. And hopefully it won't tangle. This is another thing that we can get Scotty to make. Yes. <laughs> I think I would like to try a 12 inch one okay. so that my pieces would be 24. With a nine inch when your pieces are 18, which is a good length, um, then you, you don't want your um, uh, pieces of uh, thread to be too long because then they get worn, they get tangled. Um, but you want them long enough that you don't have to be starting over all the time too. So 18 is a good number, but I think 24 might also be. Okay. So then we're gonna cut it right in the center. So this is an 18 inch piece of, of uh, thread oh, now. That's amazing, so everything's all the same right. size. And then we'll just put the loop through there and pull on it and then bring the ends back up through. And cool. so it's just looped over that. Now when I want a piece of thread, I can usually just pull them out with my fingernail or with my needle. Right from that fold. Right there. from that fold, and you don't have to. Let's see if I can. Where's my needle? Did we lose it? See, we need a needle minder. Yeah. Let's just pull a thread, and we can just pull it straight out wow. like that, and we're ready. That's and if, cool. if you need two, pull two. So when, once you've pulled them out of your uh, floss drop, you want to put the two together in the same uh, manner that they came out so that the twist is the same way. So if you can, it's a good idea to just pull them out two at a time. Okay. And that works. One thing I, I did want to show you, if you ever, you know, if you're going to use the uh, floss away bags or the bobbins or whatever, when you have a length of floss like this, the way to separate it is not to pull it like that because it'll always twist. Don't you remember you used to have, to right. have somebody hang on to it? Right. The way to do it is like this. Just pull straight. straight out. So let's grab one and pull straight out. And it kind of bunches up, but it doesn't twist. Okay. And not. So that's the way to, um, you know, if you're if you just want to keep it in your skeins and keep it in the bags or whatever, the if you do that, then you're going to have to keep winding this up and it's not around as here. neat. And it's tidy. not as neat. I really like the floss drops. <laughs> yeah. And then once you've made all your floss drops with your colors, then you just keep them on one of these book rings. Cool. And I think we linked that too. That you can get different sizes. I think this is a three inch. Um, you can get one inch or whatever. Okay. And that way you can keep your five or six colors together for this project. 
Oh, so you would have a little ring, have all just, of these with, Just with there. these, yeah, okay. yeah. So when I'm ready to do a project, I go to all my flosses and I pull out all the ones that I want and just make a small ring with the five or four or whatever we have. We have five in this one. Okay. So this one would have five. Cool. Okay? Yeah. So we're ready to stitch? Sure. So we need to thread our needle. I'm using a size 24 needle for this. I'm going to try that and see how it goes. So I've got my two threads. Pull through. The, there are two rules in cross stitch and that is you don't ever use knots and the other one is all your stitches need to go the same direction. So you need to decide which way you're going to. I start in the bottom left corner, go to the top right, and then go down to the bottom right and up to the top left. So all my stitches slant towards the top left. Okay. It's not wrong to do it the other way, so you just have to decide which way you want yours to slant and stick with it. If you, if you do them some one way and some the other, it doesn't look right. Okay. All right? All right. Is it the end so, of the world though if you do get a couple that are no, wrong? No, it's or not. Usually... It's, it's like everything else. It's it's a it's a hobby, so you want to have fun with it. So, okay. I mean, like if you got a younger person, just right. into it, you don't want to discourage them by right. Like... Well, when I go back and look at my things that I did back in the '80s and '90s, I've got stitches going both ways. So okay. yeah, because I, I don't know if I remember that. Right, or not, and <laughs> and I've I've looked at it all these years and never really noticed that. So okay. you know. All right, so you've got a little tail on so the back. So you've got a little tail on the back, and we'll just kind of hold that, and we'll we'll stitch some stitches over it to hold it in place. Okay, so you don't weave it in later. You don't leave like I a don't. longer one. I okay. don't. Um, you could you could make a knot and leave it up here, and then when you're finished, then weave that back in. Okay. Um, I just do it all in one step. All right. So I'm going to put my needle. I, I came up in that corner. I'm going to put it up in the opposite corner and go down and I'm going to then try to keep this tail behind my work. So on our chart we have two and then we skip one and then we have two. So let's do that. Okay. So two skip, two skip, two skip. Right. Two. So okay. we'll we'll do that first one, we'll come up with the second one and see how I, I went oh, yeah. over caught the that. Tail. I yeah. caught the tail in there and I'll do that with several stitches if I can. So just when you start off, you just right. put a couple stitches to anchor it. Right. So now I've got my two. I'll skip one. So we're going to do all one half first in the whole row? You can. Um, there are different methods. Some people do um, one stitch at a time. I do, I go all the way when I can with... Um, in one direction okay. and then come back in the other because I'm faster that way. Right. I also use the, what's called the sewing method, which I'm not doing right now. Um, what I do is I hold it and I do everything from the top. So, so I would you're, you're, go in like okay. that and in like... So you're not stabbing in and out, you are right. sewing. Yeah, right. that's probably what I would end up doing too. Right, so we need used to it. a, right. But if, you know, if you're a beginner and you want to do this um, a different way, you know, the, the probably the more accepted way is to do one, one square at a time and um, do this, you know, from the front and then the back where your hands are changing. You know, my hands are up here and then they're down here. Yeah. All right, so now I have my four, four sets of two, like the pattern shows. Yep. So now I'll come up in this bottom stitch right here. I'm not looking through my magnifiers. And see how I, I yeah. went in the top there, came out at the bottom of the other one. And that'll make my X's. It's kind of like embroidery, trying to always keep your needle on the top right. of your work. Well, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way where Kaylee can film it, too, yeah. which is... This, this the would things be... things you have to do yeah, to be on film, right? Right. This would be less awkward at home because I'd have my hand right here on top of it. And yeah. uh, So that's really 
that's the whole thing. You don't really ever need to learn any other stitches with cross stitch other than the X. There are specialty stitches that you can learn, but you can live your whole life with just doing the X's if you want. All right. Let's do a few more stitches um, so that Kaylee can get this on camera well. Now, on my pattern here, now I've, I've done these three in the corner, and I'll go down two, and I'll, I'll do these going okay. down. There's my needle. I knew it went somewhere. Better than in the carpet. Um, I should mention too, um, when you're, I just started on the edge and this is not what you would do. <laughs> you want to leave about three inches all the way around on your cloth so that you have room for framing. Okay. Something like this, you don't need three inches, probably an extra inch and a half all the way around outside your um, um, stitching would be enough, but I would leave at least probably two um, just to, to make it easier on yourself when you go to frame it. So don't start, you know, right at the edge of your fabric like I did here. So to make these stitches, I'll just come up in this, this box there. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll go down in this one. So I'm going from the bottom left to the top right. Then I'll come up, if I make one stitch at a time, I'll come up in the bottom right and go to the top left. So now I'll make another stitch. I'm going from the bottom left to the top right. I know it's awkward. It is awkward. For the but I'm camera. trying to do it for the yeah. camera. Yeah. Then I'll come up in this bottom right and I'll go up and over to the top left. So it'll be in that box. Very hard to do with the and angle on I'm doing camera too. on the angle I'm doing no it. pressure. Normally I would have this right up in my face. Right. With my magnifiers on. So <laughs> let's try that again. So bottom right to top left. And at this point it doesn't really matter if I want to come in this way and go down to this bottom. I can. The slant will be the same. So, so. the direction is always based on the last crossover. Right. And they all should be going the same direction. Right. So I'll go right in that square. And you have two strands there? I have two strands. And this is one? I only used one on that. That was a, a smaller count of um, fabric. Okay. So now let's say I'm running out of thread and I need to, I need to finish off. What I would do is just run this through a couple threads on the back and maybe again. So they don't have to be in a line. They, they don't can't. have to be in a line. They just have to be, and you wouldn't want to, you know, come clear over here. Right. You, you want it in the threads you, you've you just done. I thought done. they would have to be like whipped along a line. Not really. Okay. They're not going to come out that easily. Okay. So I would trim that off and then I would trim off this extra tail, tail. too so you don't have things sticking through. Mm -hmm. One more. You do need a pair of good uh, small sharp scissors for and cross -stitch. embroidery scissors. Yeah, embroidery scissors, yeah. yeah. So there's our first few stitches, which makes the corner of this, uh, it's where the blue is on mine. Um, I should talk a little bit about colors. Katie did this. These are the colors that Katie um, chose. chose for hers. So if you want to do hers, like her picture on her uh, PDF, you would choose these colors. I was doing garden gatherings at the time, so I picked colors that would match that fabric line. Mm. And so that's called a color conversion. So if you hear people talk about, oh yeah, I did a color conversion or the store did a color conversion, that's what they're talking about. They took what the designer said and they changed it to the colors they wanted to match so their decor or whatever. So they just made a new, new chart. And, and yeah, you would just do that. Like where I she has apricot, I would have, I believe this was color 930. Okay. So I would just write it on here. And I think we did that with your barn. Your barn's yeah. gonna be all blue. Yeah, right? because yeah, the flosses aren't like the picture. Right. They're totally different color. Right. Yeah. So we just took where, sh where she's got like the dark green, that's going to be where you put your dark blue or whatever. Yep. yep. So that's your color conversion. Um, I thought of something else I was going to say. And it went poof. It went poof. Yeah. Yep. So what else do we need to know? That's how to start and finish. Yeah. Um, and then we'll do some finishing of the projects later. So it's kind of not 
gone too far away it, it, from how, what it was. It's, but a, it's the same thing, just with better products, more products, better, um, designs. better designs. Yeah. Um, we have a, a huge variety of designers now that are doing cross stitch and kind of all kinds of different things. Um, let me just show you a few things um, that I brought. This one is a Lori Holt um, pattern, and I think you have that at the uh, store. It's called yeah. Sew by Row. How fun. Yeah, and it's a lot of different colors. She, she does um, hers, she charts it in DMC, and then she also gives you another uh, color conversion. And in her case, it was Weeks Dye Works. So if you wanted to use DMC, you would use this column, and if you want to choose Weeks, and you can mix them. Right, you know? and you can do whatever you right. want. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. just like our quilting. You right. can use the designer's colors or you can pick your own. Right. Yeah. And I used um, linen for mine. Mine's white linen. But you could do this on Ada. You could do it on your um, 10 count um, uh, vintage cloth if you wanted. It would just be bigger. Um, that's the other thing I think I didn't mention. Yeah, about size. On your, on your charts, they always say. Oh, I see. They say on here usually the, the, the stitch count yeah. 131 by 169 you divide those numbers by the size of cloth you have okay so if you had 10 count that's going to be 13.1 by 16.9 if you have 14 count you'll divide those two numbers by 14 and so that'll determine how big your finished piece is Horse, do all of them give you this yes okay. like here's katie's 35 by 35 we're okay. using 14 so it's going to be a little over two inches all right 14. so do they so she didn't give you this information, like if you did it on different ones? She generally does on okay. her patterns. Okay. Um, on this free chart, she, she told you the stitch count. Okay. And so right. you can pretty much choose what you want to do it on. Um, but normally on her patterns, she says, um, you know, on 14 count, it would be this, this size. size. Okay. But you can calculate that pretty easily. Just divide the stitch count by your count of your fabric. Okay, that's good to know how to do that. Yeah. All right, what so else did we you showed bring? That, well, I just had a couple things that were in this roll when I... I didn't, just a couple I, things. Yeah, just a couple things. I like so to. So, like, oh, just, how long? How many hours do you think you have in? Uh, you know, that's like Lord how long does it take you to make a I quilt? I know, but still, <laughs> I mean, is that a week? Is that um, months? No, is that... Um, that was probably all of my stitching, my cross stitch time for summer. Three weeks, three four weeks? weeks. Yeah, three or four weeks. Okay. It just depends on how much how much time you have to devote to it. And I know, you, you but know. I like to I like to like you know in my mind you know like okay right. if I start that. Is that going to be a month? Is that going to be six months? If I it devote depends. a couple hours in the evening to it, or it takes forever to finish something you're not working on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so wise um, words. Yes. Wise words. So you know we should put that in a in a in a quote in a thing. <laughs> right. If you keep at it, you know, and just do a little a night or a day or whatever. But you know, I have the same problem you do. I also want to do quilting and wool applique and. Everything yes, else, we, we cooking, all the things and going everything. on. Yeah. So, um, you know, you you don't you can't just devote a whole day to it generally. Yes, a little bit. But I do sometimes. You know, I start watching floss tubes, and that's when I watch them. Is when I'm stitching. I don't oh. just sit and watch them. I I'm stitching while I do it. Right. And um, so you can you know you can spend two or three hours in the morning. But just I would stitching. think yeah you'd have to like listen because there's you do no have way to listen. you can watch like a right. movie. Right. Yeah. Well, you can, but it's it's a little harder than with. You can uh, watch the stitching. ones you've already seen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I do that a lot. Yeah. All right. So What's this? This, this is cool. This is a reproduction antique sampler. So oh. what this was, this little girl, Mary Catherine Harris, she was 13 years old when she did it, and she made this antique sampler. And somebody has purchased the antique sampler and recharted it. Okay. So I, this is mine that I stitched, uh -huh. but it looks like the one she stitched, and I stitch it exactly like they chart it. They chart the mistakes and everything. And you can see she kind of just ran out of, her name was Mary Catherine Harris, and she ran out of space. space. So she just put calf and then <laughs> NE. And mm -hmm. so I did that too. Perfect. So this is a good example of something you might want linen for, because it looks like the antique that she oh, did. Yes, and sure. then this is another antique. Um, you, you see a lot of red um, samplers. A lot of and this was and Florence May Piggin and... did it in 1889. And so somebody has bought this antique and recharted it. And um, this is whilst Iris Knapps is the designer on this one. And she did this little girl, and then she did one that the little girl's mother had made that's kind of the same size. So those are fun. These, this kind of a thing goes really fast because okay. it's just alphabets. 
Yeah. You know, I something like this when you get into I'd the... I'd be like, okay, I'm going to stitch four letters today. Right. <laughs> when you get into the zebra, he's a Peace lot more compli complicated. Work. Something like these sewing machines. You know, that takes a little time. I would assume you wouldn't, like... You couldn't stop until you got to like that whole bottom pretty, pretty much not. Yeah. And you know, if you want to take your stitching with you, a lot of times you can just stitch the outline of it oh, and, and then leave the fill in work so that when you're in the car or something like that, you can, you can just idea. do the fill in and you don't good have to idea. be counting. Yeah, I love the little needle. I like this chart because there is a fair amount of counting, but there's a lot where you don't. I mean, once you get the outside of this, then you've got a lot of straight stitching where you can just stitch, stitch. Yeah, mindless. Yes. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. no looking. Right. And I like how you could like use different parts of this. Like if you're going to make like a little pouch or a little right. bag, you could use some of those right. sections individually. That's what's mm -hmm. cool about or, that. Or just use like one sewing machine and make a little thing yeah, like this, for your you know, just, or something. just, um, yeah. 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 Or put it on a pin cushion or whatever. Yes. So that's, that's it in a nutshell, okay, and then yeah. I've got my little. Your little so I roll. keep I keep them in there my roll. There is a video on how there to is, make this project right. roll, and it's great for keeping all these things that you intend to frame and haven't yet. Yeah. The framing is the expensive part of cross stitch, yes, and so if you learn to do it yourself, um, you can save some money and and have yeah, more choices. I mean, not too. everything has to be archival correct. Right? right. Yeah. And we'll have a, a video on how to frame some of these okay. coming up here in a few months. Awesome. Wasn't All right. that amazing? Right. All right. So I feel really pumped and really good about starting my first cross stitch project after 35 years. Um, but <laughs> I didn't be want, fun. I didn't want to do it until I talked to you and I thought, well, why not, you know, do a video on right. it so everybody can learn too if right. you're interested and maybe you want to just take the jump. I don't think I'm going to be like devoting too much time, but I do want you that will. capability yeah, to, it, to it, do a it little. It sneaks <laughs> up on you. <laughs> Of course it does, just like everything else. All right then, thanks for joining us today and make sure you subscribe and like and do all that fun stuff so we can continue to bring you more videos. Thanks everyone.